Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you here. I'll, I'll, I'll tell here. you a little story. A lot of people don't know this, but um, there is the CNN that America watches, mm -hmm. and then there is the CNN that the world watches. And in the CNN that it's America watches... a parallel watches, universe. Yeah, it is a parallel mm -hmm. universe. And on one, they just bring on people to talk but not know anything. <laughs> And in the other, you are one of the anchors. <laughs> I am such a huge fan of what you do. Welcome, welcome to The Daily Show. Thank you, it's great to be here and great to be in Cleveland. Is it great to be in Cleveland? Yes, 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 It is, it is, because honestly, people are so nice. They, can I, yeah, so and that's true. Nice. Yeah. People I have ever come across. I am yes. literally walking down the street with my colleagues and a guy in a pickup truck stops and offers us a ride and gives us a card with his name on it. It's fantastic. I don't know if Doesn't this... happen in many other places. I don't know if this is like a scam, because that happened to me as well. <laughs> no, Hang I, was, on. I was at the corner. What I was, was his at... name? No, 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 it was a woman, actually. Someone, I was at the corner and I was standing at a... And then someone came and said, like, do you guys want a ride? Do you need yeah. going? I was See, like, this it's is... genuine friendliness. It, it and really the thing is, is, you're sort of skeptical because you don't get that in most places you visit. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. And uh, also because uh, the Republican National Convention is here. So... <laughs> You, you've been on the ground, though. You're, you're doing yes. your show from here. You've been yes. on the ground. What have you seen? What are the craziest things or what are some of the scariest or saddest things you've come across? Well, it's a whole different kind of war zone. You know, I do most of my work in like, Iraq and yes. places like that, Afghanistan. Um, it, it's a war zone because there is so much division. I mean, you know, you go to these things and you watch and you listen to the speeches, and I'm thinking, how is one going to unite after this? And I really do believe that uh, you can't just sort of criminalize political differences. You know, like Chris Christie and his, I don't know what, guilty or innocent or yes, locker yeah, up yeah. or whatever. And I'm thinking, how do you actually govern? How do you bring a party together? How do you bring a country together? How do you bring a world together? Well, you have to find some common ground. And um, I think that's in short supply right now, not just here, but around the world as well. And so I'm just hoping that at some point, we can all just get along, as Rodney King once said. Rodney King and, uh, surprisingly, the Joker. <laughs> yes, the yes. Joker, who is a more measured man in this climate. Mm -hmm. Why can't we all just get along? If, um, if you're looking at this election, you're someone who is traveling the world, you have an illustrious career uh, as a news anchor who has seen elections everywhere, you've seen mm -hmm. uh, everything from coups to peaceful protests, do you see what is happening in America happening anywhere else in the world? Can you draw parallels? Look, I think all of a sudden the West is in a, in a truly historic moment right now. I think that what's happening in the United States is reflected to an extent in Europe. You saw what happened in, in Great Britain recently with Brexit. Yes. Nobody actually thought that this very sensible keep calm and carry on country would actually, you know, fling itself off a cliff, as some people think. <laughs> You know, there are many people who believe in Brexit, so, you know, we have to report the facts. But, but... Well, if, if I may interject there, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's interesting, because you wrote about something that, that really uh, connected with me, and that was in and around the conversation mm -hmm. of neutrality as a journalist. Mm -hmm. And you came out and you were speaking to the idea that journalists shouldn't be neutral. Mm -hmm which was an interesting take I'd well, never heard before. Well, uh, I've come up with a, with a sort of a slogan right now because I'm about frustrated at, uh, at all of this. So I now say, truthful, not neutral. There's a difference. Yes. Truthful is bringing the truth. Neutral can be creating a false equivalence between <laughs> this fact and that. you agree because it's to you who I'm reporting the news and I really want you to know that I go out of my way to bring you the truth and the truth is actually there you can find the truth and there are facts and there are figures and then there are other things and you can't <laughs> conflate the two yes. or equivalent or, 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 or create an equivalence there I learned that in Bosnia Trevor I covered the Bosnia war and there was one side that was massacring another side yeah. And we were expected to somehow create a moral equivalence, and there wasn't any. And so in order to be truthful, I had to tell the truth, which was that one side was being massacred by another side. And that's how you get to an end, to a resolution, when you actually have the truth. Now, um, you've also uh, spent extensive periods in the Middle East. You've covered everything in the Middle East, and, and even, I guess, in parts of North Africa as well. Yep. Looking at uh, what happened in Turkey, hmm. 
you are going, what is happening in this place? We, everyone was watching and saying, is it a coup? Is it not a coup? The president came out and said, it's not a coup because the generals are not involved in this, but there are military personnel who are trying to take over the country. The coup dies down, and now all of a sudden, it seems from some sides that maybe the president staged the coup and there's WikiLeaks, and you're an, you're an expert. Yeah. I don't get to talk to experts on this yeah. often. I, I think that what little is happening bit could be world? a bit of a conspiracy theory, but I do think that, look, all of a sudden, everything seems to be coming to a head. You had that horrible ISIS attack in Nice, and barely 24 hours later, you had this attempted coup in, in Turkey. What I think is what happened is that there were a good number of people within the military who decided that they didn't like President Erdogan anymore, for whatever reason. A, is he becoming too much uh, of an Islamist president? The military is fiercely secular. Uh, is he becoming too autocratic? Yeah. From their perspective, the president's perspective, this was a plot uh, you know, sort of, sort of inspired by uh, a, a guy who's sitting here in Pennsylvania. But what's happening now is that, A, the people came out and they refused to allow the coup to take place. That I think, is a triumph for democracy. Because no the matter, people the stopped people it, The people yes. stopped it. They really did. He called the people out and they came out, the president did. But, you know, there's a massive crackdown now. You know, 50,000 people are being either detained, uh, suspended from their jobs, or, or under investigation, including members of the press. So I think we wait to see how this plays out. When you see something ha play out like that, a president like Erdogan, who many have said is autocratic, many have said, you know, denounces free speech, and, I mean, he's, he's locked people up, he's arrested them for making jokes about him, and so on. And then you see someone like Donald Trump, who has said, he wants to get rid of the libel laws. He mm. wants to go out and go after journalists or satirists who th say things about him. And the people support both of these people. Do you see a path whereby Donald Trump could get to that same place? Because Americans always go, it can't happen here. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Mm. It won't happen here, okay? <laughs> uh, We're different, okay? I, yeah, I think that that's true. That is true. This is a democracy with the First Amendment and a very, very, you know, closely guarded freedom of expression and freedom of the press. But it is guarded because it is fragile, and we have to make sure that nothing and no one can assault this basic right that makes America strong, this First Amendment and all its amazing constitutional protections. We could sit and talk to you for hours, but, uh... I will have to watch you on television. And Thank I'll you so much you. for being here. Thank you. I really appreciate Thank it. You. All of us, we talk on CNN and CNN International. Check your local listings. Christian Alamco, everybody.